we realize and start to face the horrible truth that everything we've been told is a lie. Today I'm no longer surprised and I truly believe that every facet of our reality has been affected, manipulated, infiltrated and poisoned with half-truths. It's not always completely a lie, but the best way to tell a lie is you keep a little bit of the truth and then you're surrounded by a lot of falsifications. Everything in creation spins and vibrates. Everything has its own prime resonance fr frequency. Everything. And this is why once we can identify a prime resonance frequency of a bacterium or, a, or an atom or a whatever it is or a soccer field, we can then manipulate that, that, that object with its prime resonance frequency. In Christianity, it's the word. In Hinduism, it's Om. The Egyptians believed the universe was sung into creation and the original people of Australia, not the Ab original, so it's the original people of Australia believe that the world was um, created with three sacred songs. And then we have the phenomenal similarities between the six days of creation uh, in Christianity uh, and the word that created everything, the six aspects of Om, and the six aspects of the all-seeing eye of Horus and you start seeing the connections between all these ancient cultures and the creation stories. Sound is a source of all creation. Sound and resonance is responsible for everything. By now you should know that sound manifests physical form and this is the most basic example. I just cannot get enough of it. I can watch it millions of times. has its own specific shape, a prime resonance frequency. Are you only looking at a two-dimensional representation of a three-dimensional effect? I think he actually uses rice on a metal plate here. So the original people of Australia have a creation story that says time began when the supernatural beings awoke and broke through the surface of the earth. So imagine the surface of the earth being something like this, that metal plate being the surface of the earth and the supernatural beings broke through the surface of the earth and they created the surface of the earth with three sacred songs. This is from Hans Jenny's brilliant video, um, Cymatics. This is powder on a metal plate. It's not a liquid or a jelly, it's powder. You can see landscapes being formed here over extended periods of time. Mountains can form, valleys, volcanoes, all to do with the sound of the earth coming out of the earth. Now watch that. And then Eric Larson is the guy that created the, the cymoscope and this is when you can suddenly see how the human voice has potential to create infinitely. It's with our voice, we have the potential to create everything and anything we can imagine. That we are indeed creators. And remember, every thought you have also has a frequency and a vibration, has a resonance. Just like your voice. And some of these pictures, the images of the of this um, cymoscope images, show, give, tell us that it was these sounds, the images of the sound, that actually inspired religious symbols. That beautiful cross in a circle at the center of some of these cymatic photographs give us a very clear indication that the creators of the religious symbols knew exactly what they were talking about, that the source of, of, of creation is sound itself. And that takes us to what sound does. Sound pretty much does everything you can imagine because it's a source of creation. And, uh, and this brings us to using sound as a tool in technology. Sound creates light. 
It's very obvious. We know that God said, let there be light. And you can do this yourself by attaching a speaker to an LED light and see what happens. Royal Raymond Dreyf, we, you should know by now, that cured with the man that found the cure for all disease with sound and resonance. They were converted to electric impulses. And sound continues to, to amaze us. Sound can levitate. By now, you would have seen this many times. Just a very quick idea that... Sound actually does levitate things, but this is not how the ancients used to levitate the very big heavy objects. This is a very different technique used here. This is just pressure waves that can levitate things, very light objects, but it does give you the ability to imagine that sound actually levitates. Sound creates hurricanes. The guys, two guys in 2003 that lodged a patent to create hurricanes out of sound, believe it or not. And I believe they were granted their patent to create hurricanes. And miss, maybe this is how they create the weather for us, without us even realizing it. And this is where we start getting into the real understanding of some of the masters. And no matter how I look at it, how much research I do, I keep coming back to one guy that stands head and shoulders above all other researchers and inventors of, I don't know, for how many centuries. And that guy's name is Nikola Tesla. He says, if you want to find out the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency and vibration. That's exactly, that's exactly what I've been sharing with you here. Everything is sound and magneticism, and this is really important. So, <clears throat> what most people don't know is, remember, sound, God said, let there be light. So it's sound, moving sound, sound manifests as toroidal fields. Those to moving toroidal fields create magnetic fields, which are toroidal fields as well, and moving magnetic fields create electricity. That's the sequence of events. But what you, this tells us that because sound creates magnetic fields, it means everything must have a magnetic, uh, must be magnetic in some sort, and in some sort of way. And if it's not, there's a very specific reason why it's not magnetic. So here's an example. You might not think of water as being magnetic, but it is. And so are graphite, aluminum, and glass. Aluminum is a good example of a paramagnet. And so is oxygen, which is attracted to magnets. Here, I have a few milliliters of liquid oxygen, which sticks to the magnet. I'll explain why later. Gadolinium oxide and cupric sulfate are good examples of paramagnetic substances. Cupric sulfate is a salt that can be picked up by a magnet. 